Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia. This is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today I am joining you for a special episode of the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast, which is not a regular episode. It will be about um, eight garments that I knitted but I didn't actually wear or use this year. So I feel like this is a pretty good time of the year to reflect on what we've done. I'm kind of planning my everything I've knitted in 2023 video, which I hope to release in January. But I thought that we could start off easy by actually addressing the elephant in the room, which is, did I actually wear all of my pieces? And then the answer is no. So I had a long, hard look at the garments I knitted this year. I didn't think to look at the accessories. I just thought this would be enough for one video. Um, and then I just thought of which ones I didn't use and why. And I thought that it could be good to reflect on that in a video. And maybe you can reflect on what you've knitted and not worn this year. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I've not seen that many videos like that out there, so I thought it'd be a really interesting fresh take on the um, end of year review of our nets. Before we get into it, I'll just do a bit of housekeeping. If you want to find me on other social media platforms, you can find me on Ravelry, on Instagram and on Ko-Fi at The Woolly Worker. On Ko-Fi, you can support me for just the price of a cup of coffee. If you like my work and you want me to make more videos in the future, it's really, really appreciated and it does help. Um, because those videos take a lot of effort and, and time. And um, if you want, you can also join the Discord for the channel, the Woolly Worker Discord. There's a link in the description below and there always will be one um, because the description has all the information. So there's also timestamps and uh, links to patterns I'll mention. All of the uh, items I'm going to talk about today, I've obviously talked about in a podcast episode because this is all about the last 12 months. So if you're curious to hear more about my thoughts at the time, you can also go watch those podcasts. I think it would be quite interesting to see if I already had an inkling that I wouldn't be wearing those pieces or if some of these will be a surprise. If you're new here, I make a regular podcast episode every other week. So if this is not your type of video, then you can definitely check out the podcast episodes. And if you're coming back, then yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching all of these little one-off videos. They're really fun to do and it breaks up the monotony of podcast episodes, I think. And yeah, let me know if this is a nice format and if you'd like to see me maybe make one of these for accessories, perhaps. But this is the last episode of the year, 2023. It's crazy. Uh, the next video that will come out is actually going to come out on the 1st of January, on the Monday. But it'll be a tiny video that will just be me reminding you about the live stream and kind of summarizing all the information. So in this video at the end, I'll again do a little live stream update. I've already announced all the podcaster guests, but I will announce a couple more sponsors and um, that's pretty much it, to be honest. So it'll be a bit of a shorter update this time. So yeah, in this episode, what can you expect? I will talk about eight garments. I've got them here with me in the back. I will probably show some photos, maybe videos if I have them, of me uh, wearing them at the time. And then if I don't have good ones, I might take some new ones here in the flat, depending on the lighting situation. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll obviously try to model those things so you can see what the issues are, if it's related to fit. Some of the items I didn't wear because of um, design issues or pattern issues. Some of them were my mistakes or craftsmanship. Some of them were the color and some of them were the yarn, uh, particularly mohair. Uh, and I've also taken a bit of a summary of like features of those garments to try and see if there was one common thread between them. So I'll be summarizing all of that at the end. So I really hope that you like it. It was really, really eye-opening and fun for me to do. A bit of a slap in the face, a bit of a like things that I had an idea of, but it's nice to have the actual data to, to back that up. So yeah. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let's get into it. I'll go through them in chronological order and I'll uh, give as many details as I can quickly because I really want this video to focus on the issues, not necessarily like the features of the item. And like I said, if you have any questions, first check out the description below for like links, names of the patterns and yarns used, and then check out the podcast episodes if you want to hear more about the process. Uh, but the first one is the Tierney Slipover by the Knit Pearl Girl. So I'll just open my Ravelry here and look as well. So I knitted this in January and February last year, hence it's the first on the list. So this is a pattern of vest by the Knit Pearl Girl and it's made in 100% alpaca from Sennes Garn. Uh, and I use the color grayish gray beige melange, I think is what it's called. So 2650, which is a grayish color and it's alpaca. 
uh, which is what the Knit Pearl Girl recommended for this pattern. And she also told us to be careful about gauge and blocking and the fact that alpaca is very drapey and grows a lot, especially lengthwise. So I did a gauge swatch and I accounted for that and I made sure to follow the recommended measurements of the pattern, etc. And yet this just didn't work out. So I don't like this pattern because of the fit. And I also realized I don't actually even like the pattern anymore anyway, the texture. And then also I don't like the color. So this is a, a big flop. And I feel like to be fair to myself, that was, you know, 12 months ago. So hopefully by now I've improved more in picking patterns that I actually do like and colors that I do like. So um, I feel like a lot of those flops I'm going to be talking about are more in the first half of the year. And then towards the end of the year, I got better at making things I actually wear. So here's the bad boy here. As you can see, one of the main issues is the arm. I don't know how to pronounce that word. I'm arm sky, arm size, arm. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, so I guess this is like a classic vest construction. You start at the back, I believe, and you pick up for the front and then you join the front, join the round, do a bit of repeats and pick up for the ribbing everywhere. It's a double folded color. Uh, yeah, I just really don't like this. <laughs> so the color is just not doing anything for me. I'm more of a gray person as a neutral. I don't love beige. And I feel like this is just such a boring color, like not in a nice neutral color, but in a boring color. And I really don't like the texture. I, I don't know why. I think I was just obsessed with Instagram and everybody doing this and the sweater number 18 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. She's also coming out with a new one, I think number 28 which also has a kind of knit pearl texture. Uh, Coco Amor Knitwear is coming out with a textured one. And I just, I've decided I will never do this again. I mean, never say never, but I really am not into those textures anymore. Am I the only one? Because I feel like everybody loves these. And it, it I guess it was sort of fun and addictive to knit. Like the process of knitting wasn't the worst with this project. Um, and yeah, it just, it grew so much with blocking. The armhole is just so big, not in an intentional way. It's not flattering. I feel like I'm a bag of potatoes wearing some fabric on top. Um, the length is not doing anything for me either. It's not hitting at a particularly flattering point on my hips or legs or butt. It's just, it's just not doing it for me. So I don't even have that many photos of me wearing it. I think I had a, a small video of me trying it on and you can probably tell I wasn't particularly thrilled about it while making it. So um, other things about this pattern. So it cost me 31 pounds in yarn, which is a bit of a shame. And as you're going to discover in this video, not even the most I've spent on a project that I don't wear. I used all of the balls of yarn. I even had to dig into my swatch to finish it. Um, it took me nine days to make this. Is that right? That's crazy. It did take me nine days. I was on a like break um, at the time I was off work. So <laughs> I guess it's not that big of a waste in terms of time spent knitting. Um, but yeah, so what, what can we do about this? What can we do? So there were actually a few knots in the yarn, which me meant I had to cut it and, and start over. But I think, I don't know, because I really don't like the color. So I don't think I would want to knit something for myself. So I think what I'm going to do with that is just like either undo the whole thing and rewind the balls and sell the five balls of alpaca. Yeah, it was five skeins of alpaca. So I could sell those or I could sell the finished garment on like Vinted or something. If my mom who's watching this probably or any of my family members uh, want it, I'm more than happy to give it. It was a size two. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just don't want the garment or the yarn in my house anymore. There's no use for me. So this is just going to get donated either in this form now or um, deconstructed. So that was garment number one. I think that's everything I wanted to say about it. Uh, the next garment then is the balloon sweater by Petite Knit. And I knitted this after. So I started this half of January, finished it half of February. So it took a month to do. And I knitted this in Filklana Arweta in Marzipan, five balls, and Filklana Tilia in Snow White, 
um, 4.5 balls. So here's the garment in person. It's got amazing balloon sleeves, as you can see. It's very drapey. Um, the gauge is 20 stitches, so it's not particularly airy, but it is made of uh, fingering and a mohair held together, which you probably wouldn't get with a DK. My ribbing is actually really neat on this. I'm quite happy. I think I used three millimeter needles, which is a tighter rib than Petite Net usually asks for on her like DK patterns. Uh, those little wrists are so tiny. I remember reading notes about it that said like be careful because these could be super tight. But yeah, I think it was comfortable when I made them. The tubular bind off is beautiful. I did a great job at that, so that's nice. Not super happy with the short rows at the neck, but that's not the reason why I'm not wearing this. So this is a drop shoulder actually, uh, but the construction is very, very interesting because there's a lot of short rows to shape the shoulder. And then you're knitting the front and the back flat, and then you're joining in the round. I remember it was a sea of stockinettes. It was a lot of knitting. And then you pick up for the sleeves, and again, you have a sea of stockinettes. There's some sleeve decreases as a little accent, which are really beautiful. I really like that. And we took some really gorgeous photos of me wearing this and I, I felt really pretty. I felt very angelical and this would actually be a great sweater for the holiday period. Um, and the reason why I don't wear this and it's really heartbreaking is just that I find it too itchy because it's mohair. So if you look at Atelia, it's actually on my list, like top three of softest mohairs. I like Isayur, Mohair, Tilia, and then I think uh, Knitting for Olive are my top three and I pretty much rank them as like equal. Um, but still, that was just too itchy and it's a big like funnel neck. It's not that high, but it's still itchy on my neck and it's also very warm. So I don't really want to wear this inside the house because I'm just too warm. Um, and if we go to like a restaurant or a date night, it just, again, will be too warm because they usually put the heating on in those places. So this would be quite nice for if I was outside, because usually when I'm like the colder I am, the more I can tolerate mohair or itchy wools, but I'd still probably want a jacket. And then there we go. We have mohair and jacket. That's too much. I did enjoy knitting this project. I really liked how engaging the short rows were and the fact that you start with a tubular bind off and the sleeve decreases, like there was a lot of sea of stockinettes, but there also were a lot of parts that required you to do things and techniques that maybe you weren't doing before. Maybe I could make the balloon jacket or the balloon cardigan later, because I really like that balloon sleeve effect, but I wouldn't use a mohair. I'd use a mohair substitute or brushed alpaca for sure. It's a shame because I really, really like the shape of this garment. I just wish I could wear it. The size of it, I really like as well. I think it's nice and oversized, but not too much. I think I did size um, extra small because I was worried a uh, small would be too large. Uh, this cost me £46.37 in materials, which is already quite expensive. And it took me 30 days to do. So it was a, a money investment. It was a regular amount of time that takes me to knit a sweater. And I just, I literally haven't worn this once, same as the tourney slipover, which is a shame. And what to do about this? Again, if my mom wants it, I could give it to her. She tolerates mohair. I don't really know how else to fix the problem. I really don't want to separate myself from this piece because I really, really do. Oh, the lighting is crazy here. Forgive me for the lighting. Um, yeah, I, I really, really do like it and I wish I could wear it. So maybe I could keep it just in case and be more aware of when there... Oh no, I can't do this. And be like a bit more aware of when there will be some colder days in which I could wear this um, out and about. So maybe just give a second chance to that one and not giving up on it just yet because I really want to keep this piece. So that was the flop number two. So number three is the Primrose Slipover by Along Avec Anna. And that was my first uh, test net of this list. You will see there's a, a few more. So the Primrose Slipover is another slipover, obviously, and it also has mohair. So I made this in the Along Avec Anna yarn that she sells. Uh, she designs and also sells yarns. So this is my piece. Uh, this is the color Celadon. And the thing with that actually as well is that um, I had to buy an extra skein of 
the merino. So it, originally Anna said that we needed three balls of each, which I thought was like, again, not too expensive. But then in the end, I ran out of both the merino and the mohair. And I had like, if I, like I could have ended up buying four balls of each, but I ended up just buying one more ball of the merino. And that's what I did the ribbing in. So I don't know if you can see, but the ribbing actually only has merino and no mohair, both at the front and at the back. It's a really cute little piece with little bows. Uh, I think Petite Net just came out with a Lulu slipover, which also like never joins at the sides. Uh, and Petite Net has a button band here that you can attach the buttons. Uh, along with Kana has double knitted ties that you can just tie into a little bow, which is harder than it, than it looks to make this look nice. Um, the neck I wasn't happy with either. I picked up at a different area for like the left and the right. I don't know if you can see. It's just not the neatest edge. I did like the back short row shaping. It was very simple and effective. It's an I-cord edge for the edges. So everything just looks very neat. Well, except my neck pickup edge. But apart from that, everything just looks very neat and elegant and simple. And I also did a pearl row at the neck, but because of the way that I sewed it down, the pearl row doesn't align exactly at the top of the neck, which really bothers me. Um, so yeah, if I were to redo that, I probably would undo the entire neck, do my crochet slip stitch edge pickup trick to have a nicer neck edge and then pick up again and do the neck and then not do a pearl row just to be sure. So that's what I would do differently. And I guess I could still do this fix to be honest. And I, I might because I actually gave this slipover one last chance. I wore it a couple days ago to the mall because I knew that malls can be tricky in terms of temperature regulation. You never know if they're going to blast the heating on or not. So I was wearing something with long sleeves, wore this and then wore like a light coat on top. And that was like, that was great. That was perfect. The reason why I don't really wear this is because of mohair once again. Um, I guess the part where I'm feeling it the most is on the neck and also if the layer I'm wearing underneath is too thin, I can feel the little hairs like prickling me on the chest, which is not nice. The other thing I've heard people complain about is that the bows are hard to accommodate for when you're wearing jackets, but I didn't find that to be an issue for me. I'm actually quite happy with the way that I place mine. Like there's no risk of them coming up too high on my arm or my sleeves, depending on what I'm wearing. I guess it is a bit long, so I wouldn't see myself wearing this with dresses because that could have been a cute outfit. The color I adore. This is Celadon, I think I've already said. It's just the perfect shade of gray, blue, green. So little stats about this. I made this in February, finished it in March. So um, it took me 28 days exactly to do. This was a test knit for Anna. And we had a 10% discount as test knitters. And the total cost for this then was £44.76, which is almost as much as the balloon sweater, which was a, a whole sweater. This is a slipover. So as far as slipovers go, this is one of my most expensive ones, which is also why I'm eager to give this a second chance. And I actually was fine wearing this to the mall the other day. So I think the way to fix this and have a use for it in my wardrobe is to focus on getting more under layers and long sleeve things to wear with my slipovers. So depending on the necklines of them, I have a few v-neck slipovers that I'm not quite sure what to wear with either. I just need to find those things, buy them in ready to wear shops and then have them to pair with my vests. I used to wear my vests a lot with shirts when I would go into the office, but I don't work in an office anymore. I work from home. So at home, I actually do like wearing those long sleeves and vest combos, but just more comfortable than shirts. So I think that's everything for the primrose. Um, it wasn't the most enjoyable to knit because it was very, very much like a sea of stockinettes flat twice for the front and for the back. Apart from the short row shaping at the beginning when you were picking up for the fronts, like that was it. So not the most enjoyable project to knit personally because I prefer when there's more techniques involved. And then the double knitting bands took ages as well. And there was a bit of a pressure added because of it being a test knit. But um, yeah, I think this is one of the most positive stories of this entire roundup of garments. Okay, the next project, surprise, surprise, 
is also a mohair garment. <laughs> and this is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. And this one is also a sad story because I adore the shape of this jacket, um, cardigan. So this is by Petite Knit. I made mine in Philcola and Atelia once again because I thought that this was a mohair I could tolerate. I'm really sorry about the lighting. Like, I just didn't have another time to film. So Philcola and Atelia in Chai and then some Drops Flora I had in Stash in Beige. Then I have some cute little coconut buttons. And you probably heard a lot about the April cardigan. I actually finished mine on March 31st, so just before April. And it's a nice saddle shoulder at the top and then it goes into a raglan and it's really, really beautiful. I'm so pleased with my stitches on this and also on the balloon sweater, like say what you want about mohair, but the stitches look amazing and so neat. Like I usually am quite a loose knitter but the stitches here look great. And I didn't get any rowing out whatsoever, even though I didn't go down the needle size for the pearl rows. So it's got a nice V-neck and then button bands, lots of ribbing, it's quite cropped, and it's got just, oh, some ends in the sleeves. Whoopsie. And yeah, it's got just like normal sleeves. The sleeves don't have too deep a rib, which is nice and a bit different than usually from Petite Knit. She usually has big, deep ribbing. But yeah, I really like how this fits. I love the photos that we took <laughs> and it's just another example of Instagram versus reality where I wore this out for photos and I just didn't wear it again. And the reason for it, you can guess, is just because of no um, tolerance for mohair. Um, and I find it too warm, basically. I, I really cannot wear this mohair cardigan on top of dresses, there's no way. Um, something else that I, I wish I had done is maybe I, I would have preferred having the double knit button band. Um, I did, my first cardigan was a champagne cardigan and it had a double knit button band. And then this April cardigan, I thought I could just do the regular one because I had already, I already had a double knitted button band one and it was fine. And then I realized now that I've done either, I, I prefer the double knitted ones. And I know it's a lot of ex extra work, but yeah, it would have been worth it. Although I guess no, because I wouldn't have been wearing this. Um, so yeah, I definitely would like to make this cardigan again. And I would definitely just make it in a DK weight yarn. I was thinking of a blue cardigan or a red cardigan to make it very like spring summery. And I would definitely be wearing it with dresses. Maybe use that one as a template again to gauge whether I want to crop it just a tad more. So it really flatters me wearing my dresses. And the color for this in beige is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it's also not my favorite thing in the world. It was yarn I had in stash, the beige. So it felt good to get that out of stash. The chai I bought at the beginning of the year. So it didn't sit in the stash for too long. Um, yeah, I think then I'll definitely be making the April cardigan again with a different yarn and a different color. And then about this cardigan, again, if my mom wants it, she can have it. And if not, I think I'll still keep it because there might be a time where I am cold enough to warrant a mohair cardigan because I find mohair to be more tolerable in cardigans, especially v-neck ones, especially if I have like a neck that comes uh, higher in my underlayer. So I think this could still have a chance if I make a conscious effort to not let this get abandoned. So um, a little stats for this. Uh, I enjoy the process of knitting it. Definitely, totally would do it again. Really love this. It took 18 days to do, which is not much. And actually is very small for a cardigan. I must have been really motivated and really um, wanting the finished piece, which is a shame because I never got to enjoy the finished piece. Um, and then the total cost for this was £33.63 and most of that cost is definitely coming from the Tilia mohair because the drops was very affordable and probably also bought on sale. So yeah, a bit of a shame, but it could redeem itself and I could maybe wear it and I definitely will make another one. The next item is the Mist Sketch Sweater by Florence Miller, by Handmade by Florence. And it was also a test knit. And I used yarn that I really, really liked, which is Alpaca 1 and 2 by Essayer in the same color. So like 46 for the green and zero for the white. And this was a test knit. I enjoyed doing it. It was a color work yoke and sleeves and corrugated ribbing. And it took me 18 days to do as well. So here is the bad boy. It's really, really pretty. It's 
a really nice color which I think suits me a lot and the reason why I wasn't wearing this was actually also because of the neck but not because of the yarn because I, I actually find alpaca to be less bad than mohair although it's still not completely fine but um, the neck was a funnel neck and I just realized that this really just didn't suit me and I, I'll put some photos of the photo shoot that we did I just think it swallows me and it's not flattering and it makes me look like hunched or it just makes me feel like I've got to lift my chin up those things look so good on other people or at least on their Instagram photos it's very photogenic but in real life it's just awful especially if my posture is like down like it just gives me five chins and also because then the alpaca was a little bit irritating there and as you can see it doesn't have a funnel neck anymore I actually f folded it down and sewed it back um, which I actually was doing as part of a video that you never saw which was fixing my knits and I fixed five items of knitwear but that was at the time where my computer broke and so I was sort of like 75% done with editing the footage on my old computer and so like that just got lost so even though I have all the raw footage left I just don't have it in me to restart over so you'll never see that I fixed this um, in real time but yeah I just literally just took a strand of white yarn and whipped stitch it to the cast on edge and I actually haven't tried it on since doing that fix which is a shame because the making that video was motivating me to try and give this a second life so I think this again goes into the maybe pile where I will give this a second chance now that it's looking different do I wear this is the alpaca too itchy the color is like on point, the motif is really nice and effective. I think this would look great in online meetings. And I really like the length of this. I like the sleeves, they're like very roomy. And I know some people find that uncomfortable when there's like too much balloony sleeve at the bottom, but I really like it. It makes me feel very cute. Like the sleeves are just that tiny bit of too long where it's cute and not like an accident. So yeah, that's it for that. The process was enjoyable to do. The test net wasn't too stressful, although I was doing another one at the same time. Um, the It took, yeah, 18 days to do, and it cost me 39 pounds 17 to make because Isayur is not that uh, affordable. But Alpaca One, as an alternative to Mohair, is much cheaper because that only required, I think, three balls of Alpaca One. Um, and because my gauge is quite loose, I require, I require less yarn usually to get the length that I want. The ribbing is not neat on that, uh, even after block. Uh, there's not really a way to avoid it. I think it's just my tension with Alpaca is just not great. Um, and then, yeah. Weaving in the ends is a little bit hard because the fabric is a bit see-through and maybe you can see my ends being woven in. I don't think so, it's fine. So yeah, gonna give this a second chance and I will report back probably on Instagram stories or something whether I wear this or not. Then what I was doing at the same time was an other test knit uh, that was the Pictus Pullover by Tetis Knit Garden and that one is just a fiasco. Uh, I, I do not like it. So. I've never worn this either since the day of the photo shoot. So the yarn I used for that was Hawkshaw Sheep for the main color and then uh, Woolly Net Merino in Cossacha Gold for the um, color work. And there's a few reasons why I'm not wearing that. Uh, <laughs> like, there's a lot of reasons. So I knitted this from Stash. I had originally bought some sport yarn in colors I preferred but I realized after gauge swatching that there was absolutely no way that was gonna work. So Tetis had said that this was a fingering slash sport, so I bought a sport. But because I'm a loose knitter, like my gauge was just so big and I realized I had to actually go to a fingering and, and tiny needles to make this work. So I knitted this on um, 3.5 millimeter needles. Uh, and yeah, so I don't like the colors. I think this is again a grayish that doesn't do much for me and then gold as a contrast is again just not my color I just think that this is way too bland and boring and it doesn't complement me or highlight any of my features in any way so I don't like the colors and 
I also don't tolerate the yarn, the Hawkshaw sheep, as much as I love their wools and how rustic they are, this was maybe not the greatest idea to make such a tight fitting garment and tight fitting sleeves in a wool that I find difficult to wear. So um, if I were to reuse this yarn, I probably would make a loose cardigan or a vest that I could wear on top of things. Um, I made size three, but this still ended up being very, very fitted. Uh, so that's another thing is I'm not used to having such fitted things. And it's not because of my color work. It's just like everything is just very tight. Um, like those stitches are so tiny. It's like the gauge of a sock. And the other problem is that it's way too cropped. So you might not be able to see here, but you'll see in the photos, I had to wear my highest waisted jeans and, and then something underneath because otherwise I was like always flashing my skin. And I couldn't wear this without something underneath because it was itchy but if I was wearing a t-shirt or long sleeve things I'd have absolutely no room um, within it and you probably would be able to tell like all the folds of my undershirt because this is like skin tight. Uh, I quite like the neckline though it was like at first Tetis was going to let this roll up but in the end we added an i-cord which I think is nicer and normally I'm not a fan of circular yokes but this actually felt flattering on the yoke but we continued the color work on the sleeve and I just didn't like that, which brings me to my, I lost track, X reason why I don't like this is because I actually realized I don't even like the motif anymore or at all. And it's just not a pattern that I would have chosen or like, I, I like how it's very effective. It looks great on photos. It looks great from far away and the color work bloomed so much and neatened up a lot but while I was making it, I was not enjoying it uh, and it looked really bad and I felt not great about my color work knitting abilities um, and I was hoping it would magically fix itself after blocking and it did to an extent, but still not to a point where I'm like very proud of my color work knitting. There's a lot of long floats, catching floats. <sighs> no, I wish that the sleeves had gone down all the way maybe. Um, I don't know, I just, it's really not doing it for me color work wise. And it's a shame because this wasn't enjoyable to knit. The deadline was so tight to do a fingering weight color work sweater. There was no group chat for the test knitters. So you couldn't really talk to anyone. I didn't like the yarn. I didn't like how my color work was looking. This is like sounding so negative, but I'm just being honest. Um, and then I didn't, so I, I, I didn't like it while doing it. I didn't like how it looked after block. I didn't like wearing it for the photo shoot. And I, like part of me just always knew like I'm never gonna wear this because the only thing I could wear it was something so um, cropped are dresses, but my shoulders would be exposed and like it was so itchy. So what to do with this? I don't know. Maybe I could try and like stick it and get like a cropped little cardigan. That could be a fun experiment. Um, I could also give it to someone. I could unravel the entire thing, even though there probably would be a lot of ends, and then use the Hawkshaw Sheep yarn, which was expensive, to make a vest, like I just said, even though I'm not, again, a huge fan of the color. So maybe if I paired that with another color to maybe like brighten it or darken it or make it more interesting, maybe I could make a cabled vest, although the yarn is like maybe a bit loosely spun, so maybe it wouldn't be the best for um cables so the stats for that it was a test uh, it took me 35 days to do which is like so fast for color work but i had to because of um, the test net deadline and it cost me 55 pounds 28 so this is almost my most expensive knit this year it's not i'll tell you about that in my knitting roundup in january but this is so expensive and i don't like it which is one of the reasons, like this is the, the, the worst flop of the year and it's a shame and I don't really have anything else to say or to conclude on that. So if you have any thoughts on what you think I should do with it, if you have a, pro a project like that, like that's that for yourself to make me feel better about spending so much on something that I didn't enjoy, it definitely taught me a lot about looking at deadlines way much more critically and realizing that I don't have to sign up for everything, being way more picky about who I test knit for and what projects I test knit. Because so far we have three t 
test knitting projects that I've not worn, which is not okay and is not a good way of spending my money and my hard-earned knitting time. So yeah, let's just move on to the next one then. Next one is the Northwood V-neck by Jessie Maid. And um, a couple of reasons why I don't wear this one. Uh, actually, maybe even, maybe even, well, yeah, just two. So the first one is the colors. And I know a lot of you are gonna groan and roll your eyes. I spoke about the color of this so much. So I made this entirely from stash and scraps I had. Um, and I, I did a lot of work on Photoshop, trying to find the perfect combo, the perfect order of the stripes. Um, and in the end, I just still don't like it. I just think, just it just doesn't do it for me. And the other thing is the yarns. So I, I used everything from stash and that meant that they all kind of feel different. So we have some raw work for the dark green here at the neck. And then we have some like Zakami hand dyed here, some raw work again, some cotton merino, some merino from Wooly Knit, and then some merino from Knitting for Olive. And they just all feel different, especially the cotton merino. That feels really weird and different from the other ones. And sensory wise, it's actually not the best to be wearing those sleeves and to realize that they all feel different. Thankfully, they're almost all blocked to the same gauge, but actually the raw work even though I use it as a DK, it's actually a sport way and it's woolen spun and it does bloom and the ribbing on the sleeves is okay but you might be able to see that it is quite see-through um, and I can't remember if it was, I think it was in one of the videos that I made uh, I was wearing this and you could tell like just holes on my shoulder because of like there's a lot of tension being put at the spot where you pick up for stitches so I don't know if you can see, but it's just quite see-through and I don't like that. And I wish I had used a thicker yarn, especially for that area of the body. Because if it had been something lower, it wouldn't have mattered as much. Um, and then the other thing is that this is quite a deep V. So the yarn is a little bit rustic on the, some of the yarns are rustic. So the raw work especially is quite tough next to skin it's not next to skin soft for me. So this upper area, I'm wanting to have something underneath. And I have an under layer that's like a very deep scoop neck, but even while wearing that, sometimes it, like even with a very deep scoop, sometimes it still shows through either at the V or at the shoulders and it bothers me. So, but I like having that layer underneath. I, I couldn't wear this without anything underneath. I just am lacking under layers that are protective, not overheating and hidden. It's just really hard to find that. And so that's mostly the reason why I haven't worn this. It's not the colors that much. It's more about finding the right under layer, which is a recurrent theme apparently here. And maybe if I really dedicated some time to find those layers I'm talking about and invested in that, I would be able to wear my knitwear more. And if you have any recommendations for brands or cuts or shops or like links to send me to shop for those layers or like materials what materials do you get those layers in let me know i'm desperate um it was quite fun making this from stash the total cost for this was 34 pounds 76 which pretty average for a sweater i guess um and it took me 17 days to do which that's quite fast uh, I really enjoyed the process. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed making this. Love the way that Jessie made, like, explained how to make the stripes work. Like, sometimes when you make a stripey sweater, the pattern just tells you, oh, and also, like, add stripes, which is not really, like, helpful because obviously, like, that was always an option. But if a pattern is specifically designed for stripes and then the designer gives you lots of tips on how to make that work for you, that's top tier effort from the designer and I love that. So I really enjoyed making the short row shaping, the v-neck shaping, making all the stripes was addictive. I think I did, I gave this a mid project block as well because I was worried about the sleeve length and then it, it did work out and it did elongate a lot. Um, I like the two by two rib. I really like the knitting for olive held double that really made me want to try this out again as a different garment in the future, like just knitting for olive double. And I really like using the hand dyed, even though I'm just not 
a fan of all the colors together. But yeah, long story short, I need to find the right undergarment for this. And I will give this more of a chance in the wardrobe because it's quite unique. Um, and I, I think it may be the kind of garment that the more I wear it, the more I get used to it on me and the more I like it. I really like my pickup on the v-neck actually, it's quite neat and I know sometimes people struggle with that but this has a really nice selvage edge that I picked up nicely on so the workmanship on this, if I say so myself, is great just maybe not the best yarn choice and I don't know what I could have done better because I, I had thought so much about it I couldn't have thought more about it so maybe next time I'll just copy someone <laughs> Um, okay, I think then that that's it for that one. So the next one and the last one is another Jessie Maid pattern and it is the Cozy, Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Maid. And it also has some Zakami hand dyed, but it's it's all of it is Zakami. So uh, here's the beauty. Um, and this is the latest. So this is like the last chronological one I've made and I finished this um, in October. So that was in cashmere fingering so it was alpaca silk cashmere so it was really really enjoyable to knit with the um, pattern i was playing a bit of yarn chicken i was in between sizes so it required a lot of thinking it wasn't just read the first page and just go from there i had to think a lot about this but it wasn't too annoying i was in the headspace for thinking so that was fine and then i liked the lifted increases that was fun ribbing again does not look the neatest I just have a thing with ribbing that I'm, I'm just, I hate my tension with ribbing. Um, and some people have suggested that I do it the other way around, like do a German short row and then do the ribbing the other way, which I might do at some point. And I'll say how that went. And then I also alternated skeins with helical knitting, which I think I did a fantastic job at. Like the dye job on this and the speckle distribution and like dye lots inconsistencies, just like, no, this is perfect. This looks like one unified fabric. And I guess it does help that it's a raglan as opposed to like a drop shoulder where you have flat sections and round sections. The sleeve circumference is obviously smaller than the body, but I think that speckles are still evenly distributed or you get that orange every now and then. I think this is a, a great, great fabric. Um, I think it, it wasn't as enjoyable to knit because it was very slippery, but next time I would have used my wooden needles, which I think would have helped with that. Uh, the pattern, like I said, I couldn't fault. It was very well written and had lots of information and had lots of customizable options like crop or no crop, um, short sleeves, long sleeves, blah, blah, blah. The issue with this is kind of like <laughs> the same issue with I don't know what to wear underneath this because it is mostly alpaca and it is a little prickly sometimes, especially when it's really tight. And this is quite a fitted garment. The sleeves are also on the shorter side, but I didn't have enough yarn, so like that's all I can get. Maybe I could reblock it and stretch it more, but I already had done that to the max. So it's skin tight or it's fitted and it's a little prickly, so I'd like to wear something underneath, but I'm afraid it will show or look bulky if I wear something too thick. Um, I have a couple things I could try but the neckline is quite low on this like it's not a boat neck but it is like a wide neckline so some of my undershirts just come up too high and you can see them and it's not flattering it just looks a bit messy uh, and if I was just wearing a bra which to be honest I could do with because um, it's not that itchy like I would be fine so if I was wearing a bra it would be fine but then it's just such a thin fabric because it's fingering weight that I feel like you can see the outline of my bra, which I personally have an issue with. Like, and I know one of the solutions for that would maybe be to go find the perfect bra, like get a bra fitting session and get something that really doesn't have an outline. Um, so that again, I just need to invest in a better bra or a better undergarment for something to wear this with. The color I, I really do like on me. I think it softens me and like, it makes me look very like summery and, and springy and um, yeah, I think I like the color on me. The yarn is really soft, but I did say I didn't think I was going to knit an, another entire garment in cashmere silk. Um, it was just a bit too... Like, I like the idea in theory, but it ended up being 
a bit too structureless, too thin, too slippery. And I think this might just be a yarn better suited for accessories. Um, even though I like the idea of having something so luxurious, it just didn't really work out. I can't really put my finger on why, but I think I would just prefer a normal merino type thing. Or even just merino cashmere as opposed to alpaca silk cashmere. So the total cost for this was £44.62 because I used exactly two skins of hand-dyed yarn and it took me 95 days to make. So that was the longest time investment. Um, but I, I did enjoy the process, like I said. I think it was quite nice to see all the speckles and work with that yarn that was so soft. So I think that's all the garments. There was eight garments. As you can see, there were three test knits, I think. Uh, one, two, three, three mohairs. Um, one hand dyed, one yarn from a yarn show. So the good news is that a lot of these, the solution is just to find something to wear it with and like wear under, which is doable. And I'm excited to, to do that as my challenge next year is to like really give, the, give these things another try. And then a few of these are just uh, like, no way it's over, dead and buried. As I said, if any of my family members are watching this and you want the finished object, feel free to claim it. And if any of you is watching and you want to, to buy them from me for the cost of the yarn, get in touch with me and we can arrange something. Because I'd love to see those things maybe get a second life. But yeah, um, it's a bit sad that some of the things this year didn't work, but I've counted and done the math and I actually knitted 33 garments this year. So having eight of them not work out perfectly is fine, especially given that some of them I will really try and give them a second chance. So yeah, also actually I just remembered um, because this video like is coming out on Christmas day and there won't be a podcast episode for a while. Here's my 34th garment that is not finished as I'm finished as I'm filming this, but will be finished on Christmas day. And this is my Holly jumper by Knitting for Olive. It's my Christmas jumper and I really wanted to give you guys a preview or a sneak peek at it being finished because you've been following me as I was making it for the deadline and I'm confident I will have it done by the time I'm editing this. So yay, here's the holly jumper. But yeah, before we finish this video then and go onto the stream updates, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, can you relate to any of the reasons I cited as to why a project didn't work out? Do you want to name any of your projects that you made this year or previous years where um, you just ended up never wearing it even once. Sometimes there's a bit of a pressure on social media to talk about everything that worked out and to pretend like um, those things never happen where you just never wear it once. But let's be honest, like it does happen. I mean, it definitely did for me. So I wanted to share that, especially when we see all those 2023 like end of year roundups and the difference between those and like how enthusiastic we felt about projects as we finished them. It's interesting to see six months later us saying, oh, and then I, I never actually wore it, <laughs> which is why I wanted to de delve deeper in this video and give the reasons why. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I will now talk about a bit of stream updates, but really fast. And I really apologize for how the lighting was in this video. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really just hope it wasn't too distracting and that you can bear with me. Obviously, it's not going to be like that for every video. I'm at the mercy of the elements. So stream updates. What am I talking about? If you're new here or if you haven't seen my last three videos um, for my podcast anniversary on the 2nd of January from 12 p.m. noon to 12 a.m. midnight GMT time. So all afternoon in GMT, I will be uh, hosting a 12 hour knitting marathon for charity, for the Samaritans, a UK mental health charity that I hold very close to my heart, that I volunteered with. They offer a 24-7 support service on the phones mostly, but also by email and in person. They're obviously extremely helpful this time of the year. For people, sometimes December, January can be some of the hardest months. So uh, it, it really made so much sense for me to choose this charity. And so the way I'm doing this is I'm, I'm fundraising. So uh, you guys will be able to donate. I'll open the link very soon for donations. If you can't donate, then maybe share the link around. That would be so, so, so helpful and appreciated. Uh, any donation is welcome, you know, as little as one pound, two pound, five pounds, like that would help. Um, and then obviously if you want, you can 
join the day of the stream and keep me company, that would also help immensely uh, because I'd, I'd love not to be alone for 12 hours. Um, and there will be some podcaster guests here on the screen. You can stop the video if you want to have a read the six podcaster guests and what time slots they're coming in. We're going to have some knit and chat, some knit alongs, some quizzes, and a presentation. It's going to be so great. So make sure to go check out their channels and also come and say hi to them on the day of the stream to go see them. There's also going to be some sponsors. So I've reached out to a lot of brands to try and secure some goodies for you guys and some discounts. So we already have some six sponsors that I've talked about and um, here they are on screen. And the way that this works is that every person who donates when they put as an add on as an extra raffle ticket, it'll be obvious on the day of the donations. When you put the raffle ticket, it will ask you for your email address. And this is obviously very important for me to be able to contact you if you win. And I will randomly pick out winners and randomly assign them to the prizes. So you can't choose which prize you want. Um, and then I will contact you, ask if you still want the prize. And uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you for your physical address there and then. So that's so exciting. And I'm so, so, so thankful to all the brands that have come back to me with generous, generous discounts or prizes. So let's talk about three more. So the first one is Hedgehog Fibers. They have very generously offered and donated one special skein, which I've just received today. It was delayed. Um, it was it was delayed in Ireland. So here it is. It's a beautiful sock yarn, one of a kind skein. It's called Potluck, and it's 400 meter merino nylon, 90% merino, 10% nylon, machine washable. And it's really, really pretty. And like green is the color of the Samaritans. Blue is like my color. So it's just so fitting. And I don't know if they knew that, but yeah, uh, super excited. So like I said, just to win this, you just have to donate any amount, add the raffle ticket to your donation and you'll be entered automatically. Just make sure you're contactable by giving me your email address. And the next sponsor is Wool Warehouse. They also very generously donated a 10% discount valid for the duration of the stream on the Wool Warehouse website. I know that a lot of you from America and Canada uh, use this website, even though it's a UK one because they store drops. And then Wool Warehouse has also very, very generously donated a drops bundle. So um, I haven't received the details yet of what that is, but it's pretty self-explanatory. They're gonna pick together a bunch of natural fibers like wool, alpaca, and uh, put it together in a little taster basket and and I'll pick uh, randomly a winner and you'll get the drops bundle. So one of the winners will get the drops bundle, but everybody can use the discount and the discount code will be in the description of the live stream on the day of and it'll be valid for that. Um, it cannot be used on already discounted items, very standard. So thank you Will Warehouse for this. It's so, so, so great. And I'm so happy that you wanted to get involved in this stream. I, I'm always so amazed at the enthusiastic participation of, of the brands and, and the podcasters. It makes my heart like sore. So the next and last sponsor of this episode is then Zakami. A lot of you had guessed that and uh, Melinda and Gagarly were so kind to offer a 20% discount on their website on the day of the stream, which is so generous. I myself might put a purchase while we're streaming because I don't want to miss out on it. And then there will also be a prize for one of the raffle winners and it'll be a Corydale sock set. So I just finished making a muscle bra hat and some penny gloves with the Corydale so you don't have to use it for socks. Uh, I really like the way that the Corydale blooms and evens out after a wash. It's like day and night. Um, and so a sock set implies that there probably will be a mini along with the 80 gram or 100 gram full skin. So that's also very exciting. I also don't have a photo yet, but I will either share it here while editing or it'll be on Instagram. But yeah, um, I don't have to talk about Zakami anymore. I mean, I talk about them all the time. Love their yarns, love their collections, love their message. Like It's just a great brand and I'm so happy that they're partnering with me for today's event. They're also actually organizing a, a new yarn festival in Edinburgh next year. So that's so 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 great and exciting and I can't wait for that. So that was the three sponsors of today but there is more. There's going to be hopefully if things turn out okay three more sponsors that I will announce next week then in Monday's video which will be very short. Don't expect too much. Um, so yeah uh, keep your eyes peeled for that and also on my Instagram stories. 
uh, while we're talking about my stories, the magnum opus voting is still open. You can check out the link below. It's a Google Forms. So there's blankets, cabled textured sweaters and color work sweaters. We're in the final now. So if you just eliminate all the others and you're, we're just picking one now of each category and on the day of the stream, you're able to vote with your donations for which one of those three I should knit on next year. So will I be making a blanket? Will I be making a Mario Wallen color work sweater or cardigan? You decide. So it's also very fun and a fun way to maybe encourage donations. So check out the link below to vote and make your voices heard. And then the last thing is the Wooly Worldwide Challenge. And it's something I forgot to talk about in the last couple of episodes. But basically, if you want to send me a photo of you wearing your favorite knit sweater or garment, in your favorite place and tell me where you're from and then i will make a little gallery of people who send their photos i'd really like to see what you consider to be your like favorite piece and also where you're from in the world so just show that to me by email or um ravelry instagram discord like just send your photo to me or you can also just post it on your own instagram and use the hashtag woolly worldwide and uh the bonus is that i will pick my favorite of those photos and I will send you a sweater quantity uh, from Stash. So there's not that many entries so far because I was quite bad at advertising that. So you really st stand a good chance. So you got a couple of weeks or less than that. You got a week. You got a week to send me a photo of your favorite knit to get a chance to be entered in, in that sort of giveaway. And I'm really, really excited about this one because it's been so nice connecting with you guys and I always like to know more about you and get to know more people. So yeah, definitely send me your photo of your favorite net and your favorite place. And thank you to those who already have done so. That's it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you enjoyed the stream updates. It's getting really close to the time now. Um, it's a bit frantic here. I've got a lot to do still, but as always, thank you so, so, so much for all the kind words of encouragement. Everybody who said that they're gonna be there, that makes me feel so much better because Obviously, one of the fears is that uh, like people won't show or people won't donate, but I feel reassured. So thank you for that. And it's been a great year. I've loved making videos uh, all year. It's been so fun. Uh, I almost made 50 videos, which also feels crazy because I, yeah, that, that means I pretty much posted every week, which, yeah, that's been, that's been really, really fun. And I've learned so much and I've got tons of ideas for next year. So yeah, a little sappy end of video message to say thank you guys for watching me all year through all the seasons and following along the progress. It's been motivating. It's been a learning curve. And I've also met a lot of people and chatted to a lot of people. So every time that you leave a comment, if you've already left one, you know, if your name starts to become familiar, like just know I appreciate you so much. And making events like that, organizing that, or organizing knit nights and doing Discord, it's always I'm trying to connect with you in, in a deeper level and, and make, and, and, and trying to like let you have an input as well, as opposed to just like receiving the output that I'm creating, if that makes sense. So yeah, uh, I hope that you are excited about next year as much as I am. And I wish all of you very happy holidays, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, etc. Um, and I'll see you then on the 1st of January for my mini video and on the 2nd of January for the 12 hour stream. Uh, if you're not sick of me by then, you probably will be at the end of the 12 hours. Oh, and yeah, actually, <clears throat> actually, a few people have asked uh, and I forgot to mention that if you can't make it on the day of the stream, um, the whole stream will be recorded and uploaded on the YouTube channel so you can watch it later. So that's exciting but don't let that make you not come to the live coming live will be better because you can then interact in the live chat but yeah i hope that helps so uh happy holidays see you guys later happy knitting and see you very soon bye